The story starts two decades ago, when there has been an occasion that transformed the arena dungeon history. Twelve months. One. That day was referred to as the dawn of a brand new era. At the present time, our main protagonist survived and even managed to become an S-class hunter. But, notwithstanding that, he wasn't satisfied, considering the fact that his sister already died. He turned into blaming himself, and he felt sorry for what took place. Now, he was facing the portal, ready to enter the dungeon. He enters the portal and transforms into his adventure suit. He opened his machine window by means of preserving his bracelet, and he confirmed that he was already an S-rank adventurer. His name is Kayami, 30 years old, a level 50 S-class assassin. At this moment in time, Kayamiki was still clinging to this type of issue without understanding the purpose. Why? He was sorrowful, but he decided to forget about it for now. He went to his teammates, and they were a total of four. They explored the dungeon, led by a swordsman. When they arrived at their destination, a B-class shadow wolf then appeared. It was so large, and its eyes were glaring. Hey Kayami, try managing this one on your own, the swordsman said. Kayamiyaki didn't display any response and simply agreed with his partner. He then charged at the wolf, and the wolf roared and strongly stomped the ground and crumbled into pieces. This wolf smelled an enemy. Kayami was hiding at the big rock, and he felt such an immense power coming from this wolf. He never thought that this kind of regular monster was indeed strong. He continued to charge at the monster and seized the opportunity whilst the monster was looking the other way. He was holding his dagger, planning to stab the monster immediately. He managed to stab the wolf, causing the wolf's blood to splatter. The wolf turned around and saw him. The wolf then attacked him using its claw. His blood also splattered, and he fell to the ground. The wolf moved closer to him and roared so loudly he was about to devour him alive. But then, his swordsman partner interfered and beheaded the wolf without any hesitation. The head of the wolf was thrown behind Kayami, and he was dumbfounded while the swordsman questioned him. Why were you struggling to kill a B-rank monster? You? You're too weak for an S-class. Why don't you just retire from being an adventurer? The swordsman said. And he was so speechless, knowing that the swordsman was right about him. The girl with them stopped the swordsman from mocking Kayami. But unfortunately, she also bullied Kayami by saying that Kayami wasn't doing badly as the weakest assassin. Kayami was so down while listening to them. He was aware that he was weak, and it was decided that an assassin was not suitable for combat. Despite being ridiculed and his skills not measuring up, he still clings to this S-class party. He continually checked the photo of his sister on his necklace to motivate himself in times like this. He was doing everything so he could see his sister's smile once more, as a way to find a remedy for his sister. He was desperately working as an adventurer, but he couldn't find it. Any time, his sister's illness progressed too fast, resulting in her passing away. Unfortunately, after his sister died, he couldn't change the way he was living up until now. And then, the limit of an assassin was reached. It was proved that the assassin was the weakest class, and that it wasn't suitable for combat. Right now, they were fighting the monster in the dungeon, but he was the only one who seemed to be useless. After an hour of fighting, they rested for a moment. The swordsman with them proclaimed that he was already tired, so he told everyone that they could now go back after resting a little. He was sitting on the corpse of a monster. The female aide then extended her hand and touched the swordsman's hand to heal him. The swordsman then informed everyone that they could discuss the rewards during this break. Kayami, at the same time, was trembling in agony, but the aide never offered to help him. Hey, Kayami, you're okay without any rewards this time, right? The swordsman said, and Kayami was stopping his blood, as a result of the wound on his waist. He then responded that he didn't mind about the reward, and his companions were glad with his answer. The swordsman extended his hand to help him stand, while telling him that he should be grateful that they were keeping a weakling like him in the party. Kayamiyaki used their treatment towards him 
But still, he keeps working as an adventurer because in a dungeon, unknown opportunities always exist. He was standing still, while still enduring the pain. His companions were leaving first before him. The moment Kyle Mikey was ready to leave, he suddenly felt the ground shaking. Some part of the dungeon collapsed, and this time, another monster, who appeared to be the boss, had appeared and blocked their way. He was terrified upon seeing the monster, as it turned out to be an S-class mechanical dragon. Killen, a worthy opponent, came as the cherry on the cake today, the swordsman uttered. However, for Kayami, something feels different about this monster, as it's unlike any boss he has faced up to now. The swordsman extended his sword and decided to go and eliminate the monster, while asking the aide to help him. He charges at the monster, while the monster casts an attack on them. His sword, unfortunately, broke in half, and he was trembling in pain. He realizes that this monster in front of them is way too strong. They decided to run away, and Kayami agreed to their idea, since running away was much wiser for him. Knowing that this unknown monster was indeed too powerful, all of a sudden, he flew away and slid on the ground. He was clueless about why, and it turned out that he was kicked by his companion. His partner apologizes to him with a smile on his face. Kayami then realizes that he is in front of the monster, and his companions made him bait so they could escape. He was so scared. The monster then bit his head while the three ran away without feeling any guilt since they had already planned to cut ties with Kayami after looking in this dungeon. Kayami was so useless to them. But this time, he finally became useful in their eyes. Now, Kayami was headless. His body was kneeling on the ground, and his hand was cut off. Surprisingly, it turned out to be a clone. Kayami was hiding on the pillar, as he fortunately escaped in the nick of time with the clone. He was grateful for the high agility of an assassin, but he can't accept that his party used him as bait to escape. Right now, he also wanted to escape since he was sure he couldn't fight the monster alone by himself. But all of a sudden, he heard the monster speak, saying that his plan was proceeding smoothly and that he shall cross the gate and annihilate the humans. Kayam was startled. The monster took a step while adding that the time had come since the gates were now open. The monster faced Kayami, and Kayami then told the monster that it should be impossible for monsters to cross the gate. But then, the monster responded that it was possible for him. Kayami was scared, knowing that it might be catastrophic if the monster's statement was true. He held his dagger, thinking that he couldn't run away this time. After hearing what the monster said, he stood and bravely prepared himself to fight, even if there was only one person he could save. The monster arose, proclaiming that Kayam Mayaki couldn't do anything, especially that he was someone who was used as bait. He then blows and attacks, and Kyle Mikey immediately activates several clones to confuse the monster. Most of his clones shattered to pieces, and the monster attacked the remaining clones he could see. He didn't realize that Kyle Mikey was above him and charged. He stabbed the monster using his dagger, but the monster was too stiff. The monster then attacked him. He flew away and slammed into the wall. He was bleeding. But despite that, he was confident that there must be a chance to win. He used his clone, but the monster detected his real body using its heat. So, the monster blew an attack once again, and this time, he flinched as he realized something. His clones flew away, and his main body was already exposed. He then concludes that the monster may have detected his real body using its heat. He stared at the monster, and he noticed the eye area. He then concludes that if he can stab this eye, he can probably defeat the monster. He decided to gamble his life for the sake of humanity. He then charged at the monster with his three clones, and the monster was confused about what he was trying to do. My bad, I'm putting my life on the line, Kaimi uttered, while dashing at the monster. The monster extended its hand to catch him, and his real body was unfortunately hit by its claws. Still. He continued to get near the monster's eye and stabbed it using his broken dagger, combined with his phantom blade and slash technique. 
The blood of the monster splattered on his face. The monster screamed in pain, and a silhouette then appeared. Part of its body exploded, and it doesn't know how it happened. Kayami, at the same time, was smiling, knowing that he made the right move. But he cannot deny the fact that he's already at his limit for possessing the weakest job. He guessed. He tried to be cool, magnificent. This is the primary time I've been driven this far. The plan can be postponed. Let's meet again. The monster uttered and disappeared. Kayomi knew that it was the end of his war against the monster boss in this dungeon. However, he wasn't sure if he helped the world after defeating it. All of a sudden, an strange window popped up above him. It was said that there would be a quest bonus to be applied, but then there may be currently no quest. Kayomi turned about, what this screen was above him, but then he closed his eyes and forgot about it, thinking that it didn't matter to him now that he was dying. An alarm suddenly beeped. Someone turns it off and gets up in confusion. He went inside his comfort room and screamed. All of a sudden, it turned out that it was still Kyle Mickey, but in a younger version of himself. He was dumbfounded upon knowing that he was alive and especially regressed in time. He was touching himself to make sure he wasn't dreaming. He wondered why he returned, and he concluded that it might be the influence of the monster he last fought. He then remembered the unknown display that appeared earlier. He regrets thinking that it might be because of it. He went back to his bed as he heard his phone ring. He picked it up and saw a message from his younger sister. His sister told him that she was yearning for some chocolate. His sister's name is Natsu. He misses her a lot. His tears dropped from his eyes as he was so glad now that his sister was also alive and they were together again. He wiped his tears and told himself that there was nothing to hesitate about now. He vows that he won't make the same mistakes again for the sake of his sister. He becomes serious, telling himself to ensure to keep Natsu this time. He straight away rushed to the clinic, where Natsu was constrained. He strongly opened the door, which made Natsu startled. Natsu turned into stunned, questioning what passed off to her brother. Kyle Mayaki then ran towards his sister and touched her. He was smiling extensively whilst he showed that Natsu changed into real. Natsu also smiled as she idea her brother changed into simply joking. Is there even a fake model of me? She stated. This time, news become played at the television about the mana fever. The newscaster said that the wide variety of patients continues to upward thrust and the primary remedy for the disease is still under research. Additionally, they noted that researchers are nonetheless searching out a civilian antibody drug. Kayami became mad looking the information, as he knew that no drug should remedy mana fever. He became also conscious that the researchers would broaden the right remedy, but only in the future, and for him to have the ability capable of having enough money that treatment, he should come to be an adventurer. He then stood, as he found out that there has been no motive for him to relax now, so he will be capable of register as an adventurer as soon as viable. He left the medical institution and headed someplace, a quest abruptly regarded. He wanted to complete ten hill dashes, twenty pull-ups, and thirty greeting human beings. Kayami was so confused, since he never had a quest given via a device like this earlier then. Additionally. The voice of the device is the voice he heard earlier than his demise, pronouncing that a quest would be his reward for the subjugation of Ku. He slightly smiled, as he found out that with the assist of his gadget, he may want to without problems become more potent. He commenced greeting an antique guy, and the old guy became startled by his loud voice. He bowed down at the vintage guy to expose admire after which walked away. He feels a little bit aggravated due to the fact that greeting people is just too embarrassing for him. He knew that it wouldn't count number until he used a noisy voice, so he wouldn't have a desire either. He already greeted a total of two human beings and without problems finished ten of the hill sprint. He additionally finished the pole United States right after the hill sprint, so he persisted to greet humans to finish the hunt. After an hour, he ultimately completed the entirety. The gadget window then appeared to claim that he cleared the hunt. 
and the reward became issued immediately. As in step with the machine good-sized growth is given because the first clean bonus, and it wished that Kyle Mickey would nonetheless do his excellent for the following day. Luckily, he leveled up to stage 3, which he can't trust because it usually might take around 3 months. He then smiled and concluded that he could take the most powerful course if the whole thing now turned into proper. After greeting the ultimate character, the woman gave him a sweet, and he typical it, notwithstanding that he changed into shy. Meanwhile, he arrived at the adventurer registry. He advised the attendant that he desired to sign in himself as an adventurer. Up until now, he cannot get over about the search, and he recalled that greeting humans changed into herbal to him lower back in his past lifestyles. After the attendant analyzes his popularity as an adventurer, she fingers him the bracelet. He then noticed his details, and he turned into presently 18 years antique, F rank classless. He also showed that he's genuinely a stage 3 adventurer now. The attendant then instructed told him that he should select his magnificence with the bracelet. She wished him to pick out wisely, and he then gave thanks to the woman. Each class has its very own set of competencies. Shockingly, the magnificence he chooses is not anything. He desired to remain classless, and he even said it out loud to the bracelet. The folks who overheard his choice were guffawing out loud, understanding that being classless can't be able to conquer a dungeon. They referred to as him an idiot, but he does not care, as he believes that being classless will ultimately be taken into consideration because the strongest course. The attendant turned into additionally disappointed with his decision. She instructed him that it might be better if he ought to pick his magnificence wisely, but not be classless. However, then Kayumi wasn't paying attention to her. After being inside the Adventurer Guild, he then went to the armory and purchased a demon's bite sword as his weapon. The old guy became worried for him and asked him if he may want to sincerely cope with the sword effortlessly. Kayumi became happy since it became very light for him even without a sword ability, and he turned into positive. It was due to the fact he turned into already at degree 3. He then carried the long sword in his back, and he changed into high quality about its high-priced price, due to the fact that he believed preliminary funding is very vital. Furthermore, he already has the first component right. Now he without delay went to the novice's dungeon. There had been adventurers outside the portal and they had been afraid to enter. To their wonder, Kyle Mayaki entered without any worry. They felt so little even as staring at Kyle Mayaki, saying that Kyle Mayaki is probably an actual deal. The newbie's portal is main him to the woodland. While entering, he senses a nostalgic feeling, due to the fact he extensively utilized to begin right here. When he entered, there had been F elegance sticky slimes round. He then removed it with none words, and at the same time as he became combating the usage of the sword, he felt that his body felt mild, even with none competencies. It turned into really easy for him, as a degree three. He additionally removed an F elegant sword skeleton inside the beginner's dungeon, and he recalled that he used to war to kill these types of monsters, even together with his murderer skill. After executing the wave of monsters, he finally finished it effortlessly, which made him experience glad. He then grabbed the magic stones that were dropped through the monsters. Those stones might be used to produce energy with the assist of science. A energy on degree adventurers go within the dungeons to find these stones. Whilst choosing up the stones, he unexpectedly heard a noisy roar. It became out that there has been any other monster that seemed an e-magnificence uncommon monster, Oros. He then charged to Oros, understanding that Oros hardly ever indicates up within the dungeons. It is an impressive opponent. He tried to assault it with his sword, however Oros blocked his assault. He pushed his sword, and this time Oros trembled till he let go of his protect. He then grabbed his weapon and attempted to assault Kayami, the use of his radiant sword minimize ability. He else also used his soaring sky sword dance ability but all of his assault changed into blocked by Kayami. Kayami turned into smiling, 
at the same time as thinking that the actual potential of the classless could be found fifteen years from now. He swung his sword and managed to damage Oro's defend. He suddenly discovered the radiant sword decrease. An indomitable sword cut down when in comparison to other instructions. The increased speed of classless mastery is greater than ten times. As soon as having a high mastery, copying his opponent's skill becomes possible. After only a few mins of preventing Horo, he in the end shattered him to portions. Horo's bones dropped at the ground, together with the D-Elegance Magic Stone, a improper shade of gold. After clearing the novice's dungeon, he went back to the Adventurer Guild, and he advised the attendant that he became a chunk one of a kind from what he had deliberate. The attendant notion that he failed to be classless, so she stated it changed into virtually not possible to be classless. However, then Kayomi informed her that she turned into wrong. She became stunned the instant Kayomi positioned his bag in front of the lady, and it became full of magic stones. A person abruptly touched Chi's shoulder. Wait a minute, a classless defeating a rare monster. That must be cheating. The unknown man angrily, whilst pulling Chi's shirt relatively. Kayomi squeezed the man's arm, and the guy was shaking an ache. He then runs away to his buddies after Kayami shall we go of him. Right now, Kyle Mayaki earned a total of 1068 yen. At that moment, an emergency quest all of a sudden begun. Kyle Mayaki became stunned upon seeing it. 